Good morning, Africa, and welcome to the Breakfast Connect Show on Africa Business Radio. It's time to get into our guest segment right here on Africa Business Radio. And today, we're talking contemporary art in Africa and the diaspora. And I've got joining me for conversation... Tandazani Lakama. She's the assistant curator at Zeet's Mocha. And of course, Professor Siraj Rasul of University of Western Cape joining me for conversations. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So over to you, Tandazani. Now, contemporary art for Africa and the diaspora has been quite popular for a number of years now. What are some of the big trends that we can look forward to as the continent and the world in general move towards a post-pandemic future? Maybe just enlighten us on what the current situation is at the moment. Well, contemporary art from Africa is blossoming in a beautiful way, in my opinion. But just to say that... um, I kind of don't like the word trend because people assume that, oh, something new is happening. Mm -hmm. But no, our artists, um, our thinkers have been working for a very, very long time. So, And occasionally um, there's a spotlight on the continent. So that's the first thing. However, with that said, especially with the difficult uh, past year that we've had, I think one of the reasons why I'm so hopeful and I'm so excited is that, you know, and this is speaking very, very broadly. Okay. Africans, we we know how to make beautiful things from crisis or in spite of crisis. Um, and the reason why I say that is that the art world continues to blossom and to burgeon on the African continent. There are lots of artist-led initiatives that continue to grow or that be, continue to start. Um, I'll give an example of Ibrahim Mahama in Ghana, mm. um, he becomes successful and he just keeps, uh, he grows a community, he starts a school, he starts residency spaces. And it's not just him. I, um, there are probably a hundred artists from various African countries. Admire Kamsengerere in Zimbabwe, um, where um, they, they make it out there, they come back home and they build something at home. So they're right. building infrastructures in their home countries. Um, And then for the last, I would say maybe 20, 30 years, we have, you know, our, now they've become household names, our BC Silvers, who started centers like the the um, the CCA Lagos, um, our Koyo Kuos, who's now my director, who started Raw Material. Um, in the diaspora, um, Bonaventure Soen Dikum, who started Savvy. Hmm. And, and I'm excited that, you know, we didn't just stop there. There's a new generation that's starting new initiatives almost, I want to say almost on a daily basis. Right. Those who couldn't do physical things um, because of the pandemic, um, I mean started podcasts like two years ago it was very hard for me as someone who's researching and thinking about contemporary art from africa all the time to find podcasts that were specifically focused on art from africa Mm. but now i can tell you there are about five new ones that um people can plug into and um so i'm very excited about the fact that regardless of the difficult times we're in, we're just uh, shifting, we're adapting. And I think that's the beauty of, um, and I'm speaking very broadly, that's yeah. the beauty of who we are as Africans. We know how to create beautiful things from crisis. Mm. And I also another sort of trend, I'm saying trend with inverted commas, is diaspora artists coming and building spaces at home. Um, so Kaindi Wiley um, with this project in Senegal, Wangeshi Mutu, um, Michael Armitage, all um, doing things to equip the next generation on the continent. So that's very, very exciting for me. And that's why I'm excited that uh, we can work with the UWC on this pan-African project. It's not a South African project. It's a pan-African project. Mm-hmm. Because we want to equip, we want to make sure that with all these centers, all these spaces um, across the continent of Africa, um, that they have professional skills that young people are able to get experience so that they can run successful biennales, successful festivals, successful galleries, successful um, publishing. So, yeah. 
All right, that's a whole lot, but I think I see a blossoming in, in this sector. All right, and then there's this 21st century trend, uh, overseas schools trend, that uh, sort of pushed identity exploration and uh, some politically charged subject matter. Is that the case for schools in Africa, really? And is there enough knowledge when it comes to contemporary arts for the new generation of art and museum professionals in Africa? Because it's not so, you know, it's not spoken about so much. Um, You know, you're absolutely right Mm. that contemporary art uh, needs to be understood in relation to different locations of value. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is about the relationship between uh, between the market and the museum, between uh, the, the Biennale and the art fair. And as we think about the place of contemporary art in the museum, we need to understand that museums internationally right now are highly contested spaces. They are spaces of intense contestation. Mm. And, and especially when we think of the relationship between contemporary art and historical pieces of art that are housed in art museums uh, around the world or or even in anthropology museums around the world and where we are learning that museums are not necessarily the institutions of care that we associate with Mm. them with. That museums have been complicit in histories of plunder and looting on the African continent. Right. So these are these are these are these are matters that that we want this program to concentrate on at a time of tremendous excitement and movement in mm-hmm. the field of museums internationally, in spite of the fact that we have been in lockdown, in spite of the impact that the pandemic has had, mm-hmm. and the fact that the pandemic has interrupted these movements and these developments where we are entering a phase of what we call restitution mm-hmm. and where this is the moment of the of the development of new invigorated african art museums mm. Well, we're going to get uh, to your program, of course. That's going to be um, a part of our conversation. But you've mentioned a couple of challenges, you know, we're facing in Africa. How how do we change the narrative as regards uh, African and and arts and also promote narratives that are important to, you know, building artistic communities, even though this is going to be a part of your program, but we just want to hear it here. Siraj, over to you. Okay. Yeah, I mean... um... You know, museums are a location for the for the for the extension of African sovereignty that came to African societies, but with independence, but where that sovereignty was incomplete, mm. uh, either because plundered collections were retained in European institutions, and many of them, such as the leading British institutions hold on to those collections uh, in the name of everybody in the world, right. even though those are tainted uh, collections with, with, um, with unethical provenance. Um, and it's, and we, we are so aware of how necessary it is to create opportunities for re- restitution and reunification of African material culture of African art with the people of the African continent as part of the ongoing process of of the building of self-respect, the building of an image of African excellence, an image of of, uh, African agency, so that African societies are not figured through the anthropological, are not figured in timeless frameworks of cultures frozen in time. Mm. This is a dynamic continent. It is a a continent of cultural production. It is a continent of the production of the most exciting art in the world right Right. now. And this this is an excellent time to be building our resources for self reliance, for a, for a positive self image and we want culture to be high up on the agenda of the African Union and of African governments. 
Interesting. Now over to you, Tandazani. Uh, you are a curator with the university with um, Zaith Mocha. Uh, and then there's this collaboration between Zaith Mocha and the University of Western Cape, right? So what, what prompted this collaboration? Well, um, first of all, just to add to what uh, Professor Russell was saying just mm-hmm. now, I think it's also um, important, and I'm in complete agreement with him, which is, you know, why it's been, it's been such an amazing it's, um, past few months collaborating on this project. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to also say that in, we're in a time where um, it's very important for people to see themselves reflected in culture, right. for Africans to be able to tell their own stories from their own vantage points, and um, for us to create the platforms, the spaces to to for critical discourse, for us to be able to see the cultural production that uh, Professor Russell was talking about. Mm. I'll just give you an example. Um, before the museum, the Zeitzmoker Museum was built uh, about maybe seven, ten years ago uh, when I was a student. Ellen Natsui had a retrospective. Ellen Natsui is a Nigerian, one of the most celebrated um, Ghanaian Nigerian artists on the continent. Hmm. He had a retrospective in Toronto, Canada. And the only way I could see it was for me to get on a train um, and go across into, uh, I was studying in the US, fortunately, and to um, uh, get on a train and go all the way to Toronto for me to be able to to, to celebrate and to see an African art, a contemporary African artist. Um, so spaces like Zeitzmoka and spaces that are also um, being developed on the continent mm. are allowing students to be able to, to see themselves reflected in culture, but also be able to, to enjoy certain um, exhibitions, certain ideas that have been exhibited outside of the continent. And um, to go back to your question about how Zeitzmoka came to work um, with UWC, mm-hmm. uh, well, UWC has a really interesting history in um, anti-apartheid movement, and I'm sure Professor Rasul can speak more to that in a moment. But it was such an obvious partnership with us because we wanted to be aligned with it. As a museum, we're interested in... Um, artists um, and thinkers that are thinking about justice, about um, about migration, about identity, um, some of the social political issues that affect us today about decolonization. Mm. Um, we're thinking about the complexities of the post-colonial moment that we're in. And when we looked around, it just um, at, at potential partners. Um, the University of the Western Cape was such an obvious choice for us because they're they're aligned um, and very well positioned to to um, complement the work that we are doing as a contemporary art institution. Interesting. So, what can fellows expect to learn, really, and who can participate in this program? Um, Suraj, do you want to talk about the academic side? Yeah. Um, let, let Let me do that, Tandazani. Okay. Um, you know, what's exciting about this opportunity is that you, we are constructing a program that exists between the academy and public culture, where we can't do this by ourselves as a site of academic production, of, mm. of, uh, of graduate education and of scholarly research. We are doing this in partnership with one of the leading museums on the African continent, and it so from our point of view, students will enter an intensive year long, two semester long program at the honors offered at the honors level, mm. which is a South African graduate level just before the master's level. And the students will do courses, they will do a core course. That, uh, that will focus on methodology, on research, that will introduce them to scholarship in history, in art history, in collecting, curatorship, um, and in the humanities more broadly. And they will also have the opportunity to do elective courses, either in archives and collecting, mm. or in what we call visual history, 
Uh, and then we also have a special standalone museum and heritage studies course that all of them will do in the second semester. Okay. And as they do their core course, which is that general history and humanities course, that course will be tied to an active internship program, which they will all do inside of the different departments of Zeitz Mocha uh, and where that internship will be related to the research essay, which all of them will do as one of their outcomes of their program. And so a student going through this program will be able, will, will be empowered with the, the with, with curatorial skills, with knowledge about different aspects of museums, mm -hmm. with knowledge about the field of her heritage as a whole, and will do so in order that as some as people who will be able to contribute to building a new generation of leaders in the sector of art museums, museums and heritage institutions on the African continent. Hmm, interesting. This is indeed fully packed. But aside all of this, you know, very great knowledge they'll be accumulating. Is there something else they'll be expecting to get at the completion of this program? Um, can I just add to what uh, Siraj said? All right, please go ahead. Okay. So um, while they're gaining all that um, amazing, rigorous uh, academic knowledge mm. from the University of the Western Cape, they'll be obtaining practical hands-on experience through Zeitzmoker. Hmm, nice. So they'll be spending, um, so like Professor Rasul said, um, as part of the internship, they will be um, attached to various departments at Zeitzmoker. Okay. And so they will be coming along with us and working on um, projects that are current like current projects at sites Moka they'll be working in our on exhibitions and public programming the various departments that they'll be involved in include our, our institutional advancement which um, includes eventing communications fundraising so they'll be gaining really practical hands-on knowledge so that when they go back to their various countries um, from wherever they are on the continent, they'll know how to do a funding proposal. They'll know how to do uh, a press release. Um, and they would have had that experience from Zeitzmoker. Right. Um, in addition, they'll be, they'll get experience in our curatorial department. And curatorial is quite broad. So we have our registral work. So they'll know how to, to look for provenance, how to condition reports, do loan agreements, uh, do shipping logistics. Um, uh, how to sort out temperature control for certain types of artworks. They'll know about exhibition management, um, how to create a plan, what, you know, what colors goes with what work. Mm -hmm. They'll know about how to uh, write a curatorial statement. Um, they'll be dealing with the artists that will be um, exhibiting, um, which I think is, is really great. So they'll get to meet everyone on our exhibition calendar for next year. Um, and um, they'll be able to, they'll have a space and they'll be able to speak into the work that we're currently doing. And um, also not to forget our Center for Art Education. Um, and that's very, very broad again. Currently, the Center for Art, Center for Art Education at Zeitzmoka, it works with several partners around um, the Western Cape, partners such as La Lela um, and the Butterfly Art Project that do after schools program. They'll be doing outreach programs, going, taking the museum out to the people in various fun ways. Um, they'll learn about uh, family programming or how to take the content that's created in the exhibition space and um, reinterpret it for, for a wide range of audiences, um, as well as publishing. How do you create an art book? So um, it's going to be very intense and very, very rigorous. But this is something that I wish I could have enrolled in um, 10, 15 years ago. Wow, amazing stuff indeed. This is really, really fully packed. I'm not sure I got um, exactly when this is going to start. And is there a limited number of people you're you know, taking in at this initial phase? 
Yes, so for now we are um, taking five applicants. Okay. There'll be five applicants and the program is set to run from February 2022 okay. to February 2023. So it's a one-year program. Okay, how exactly can um, individuals apply? So you can apply through our website. Both the UWC and the Zeitzmacher websites have a link. Um and yeah, you can, it's very easy. It's a very quick application where you can apply online and um, successful applicants. You have until end of September, the last day of September, close of business to apply. All right. I promise this won't be long. So I'll just have to wrap up this conversation now, Tandazani. But just before I do that, uh, just to wrap this up real quick, uh, what are your predictions for the future as regards contemporary art in Africa? I'd like to hear from you and the professor. I think, in fact, I know for sure that our future is bright. Um, I love the fact that more and more people, especially of the younger generation, are, are taking agency. Um, um, it's, it's about us telling our stories. It's about, you know, our viewpoint. And I love that there are more and more spaces um, and platforms from which we can amplify important narratives that have in the past been omitted mm. or um, haven't been given the, the, the space that they require. Right. Professor? Yeah, it's, um, it is so, it is such a privilege to be involved in a program that brings the field of cultural production, uh, art history and museum studies into a relationship with a department of history uh, where history has been the domain that has fueled the building of new societies on the African continent, such as post-apartheid South Africa, such as uh, 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 independent Zimbabwe, independent Namibia, uh, where Southern Africa has been like a, a laboratory of how you take culture how you take history and how you make new societies. Mm. Uh, this is an opportunity to, to place creativity and agency at the center of such a, such a program and to, and to, and to build upon the energies and the excitement and the interests that young people will bring to such a program. Mm. Uh, our hope is that this is a beginning and that this can go on to be a strong program, a thriving program. You know, we are not the only one of its kind. We've got a long relationship with uh, one of the most exciting uh, locations of art education mm. on the continent, that is at Nsuka, where we've had students come from there, come to us, and go back. The University of Nigeria, uh, got, you mean? Sorry for interjecting. The University of Nigeria at Nsuka. Interesting, Absolutely. interesting. Absolutely. That is the, one of the leading uh, locations for education in the field of art, mm. art production and art history and, and the curatorial. We have absolutely no doubt about this. We want to build partnerships. We want to build a, a, a unity of purpose on the African continent because... This is ultimately about reimagining societies of the future. Hmm. This has been a very enlightening conversation, I must say. I've been talking with Tandazani Adlakama. She's the assistant curator at Zaitz Mocha. And of course, Professor Siraj Rasul of University of Western Cape. i been talking um, contemporary art in Africa. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you very um, much. Thank you. And that's it on our guest segment for the morning. I'll be right back with more. Stay here.